We trust the rules of the world, gravity, time, sound, light. But every so often the rules fail, and when they do, reality doesn't break. It pauses. Across America, scientists, pilots, and bystanders have watched physics bend. Seconds stretch, objects float, sound reverse. They wrote it down. They wrote it. Then stopped talking about it. Because if the laws of nature can glitch once, what's stopping them from doing it again? Lock your doors. Put on your headphones. Because after this video, you'll never trust gravity, time, or light again. The Levitation Field Incident Huntsville was a city built on gravity. Home of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, it was where engineers spent years learning how to escape it. But in the summer of 1973, gravity escaped them. On July 18th, a test crew from the U.S. Army Ballistic Laboratory set up a magnetic calibration experiment outside an unused hangar near Redstone Arsenal. The device, an early-stage superconducting generator, was designed to measure how magnetic fields behaved under extreme vibration. It was never meant to move anything. At 11.06 a.m., witnesses reported a deep metallic hum that rattled windows across the base. Within seconds, the air shimmered, as if heat waves had risen from the ground. Then the tools began to lift. Wrenches, bolts, a clipboard, all rising gently one by one before hanging motionless at chest height. Even gravel dust floated midair, forming a still, silent cloud around the generator. Ranger and test witness Harold Krantz described it later. It wasn't like wind. Everything just forgot to fall. The phenomenon lasted six seconds. Then the hum stopped, and everything dropped simultaneously. No drift, no arc, just vertical impact. When researchers examined the ground, they found no magnetic residue. Metal objects weren't magnetized, and accelerometers had recorded a sudden loss of local gravitational pull, values dipping to negative 0.1 g. For those six seconds, gravity reversed direction. The official report, declassified decades later under the title Transient Anomalous Field Event, Test AB3, lists the cause as inductive resonance overload, but handwritten notes in the margins tell a different story. No magnetic distortion detected. No electric surge. Field appeared independent of hardware. In other words, the generator didn't cause it, it just happened around it. A follow-up test was scheduled three days later. At precisely the same time, 11.06 a.m., the new setup failed before activation. Power systems shut down, lights flickered, and a small patch of dust floated up from the floor again. Not above the generator this time, but 30 feet away where no instruments were placed. One technician swore he saw the floor itself ripple like water catching wind. The site was sealed, and all data transferred to NASA for analysis. The files remained classified until 2009, when a researcher from the University of Alabama discovered the notation, field behavior consistent with localized reduction in gravitational constant. There's no record of any other experiment replicating it. The coordinates of the hangar still exist, though the building is gone. Locals call it the weightless patch, a flat unmarked lot where birds refuse to land and where dropped objects sometimes take a heartbeat too long to hit the ground. Maybe it was magnetism, maybe it was coincidence, or maybe for six seconds in Alabama the universe blinked my and forgot which way was down. The Lost Hour of the Lake Flathead Lake is one of the clearest bodies of water in North America, still cold and ancient. Locals say it mirrors time itself, but in August of 2001, that mirror cracked. At 4.13 p.m. on a calm afternoon, three fishing boats were anchored near the southwest bay. The sky was overcast but quiet. One fisherman, a retired electrician named Michael Holtz, later said he noticed the air go thick like the sound of the world had been muted. Then the storm appeared. Not lightning, just a wall of mist rolling across the water, moving faster than any weather pattern. Every compass and depth finder on the boats went dead. Clocks stopped at the same moment, 4.13 p.m., then resumed at 5.13. Exactly one hour gone. When the fog lifted, the sky was clear again, but the sun was lower than it should have been. All three crews radioed in, thinking their watches had malfunctioned. But when they reached the docks, they found the same missing time on every device. Cell phones, digital watches, even an analog camera's timestamp, all skipping forward 60 minutes without error messages or signs of power loss. The strangest part? The camcorder didn't cut. Its battery showed continuous operation for 87 minutes, but the tape contained only 27 minutes of footage. The gap wasn't static or blank. It was repeated frames, the same five seconds looping 15 times. 
Experts reviewing the footage confirmed it wasn't editing or glitch. The magnetic tape had physically duplicated its own recording midstream, a phenomenon never replicated in analog systems. Meteorologists proposed a localized electromagnetic surge, but FAA radar logs show no electrical disturbance that day. No storm cell, no temperature inversion, nothing. Only one odd note in the Flathead County Emergency Dispatch. Multiple 911 calls from shore reporting lights over water, duration one hour. No flight paths confirmed. Responding units lost radio for 58 minutes. After the event, the fishermen described brief nosebleeds and dizziness, consistent with mild radiation exposure, yet no isotopes were detected. For years, the story was dismissed as folklore until 2013, when an astrophysicist studying atmospheric interference published a short, obscure paper, Temporal Discontinuity Observed in Montana Region, Possible Chrono Refraction Due to Magnetospheric Distortion. In plain terms, light and time might have bent separately for one hour. Today, locals call it the still water gap. Sometimes late at night, boaters claim their GPS flashes the same missing minute. 4.13 frozen on screen, even when it isn't August, even when the year is wrong. The government calls it a data error. But on the lake, fishermen still glance at the sky when the air goes too quiet, because time doesn't always move forward. Sometimes it stops just long enough to notice you noticing it. The Daylight Flash of Marfa Marfa has always been a place of strange light. For over a century, travelers have reported glowing spheres drifting over the desert plains. But in June of 1989, those lights didn't just appear. They rewrote daylight itself. At 2.46 p.m., during an oppressive heat wave, residents of Marfa and Alpine reported a sudden pulse of white light across the horizon. It wasn't lightning. There were no clouds, no thunder, no delay. Just one enormous, soundless flash that blanketed 30 miles of desert for nearly a full minute. Witnesses said the light felt wrong. It didn't cast shadows. It erased them. Surfaces that should have reflected chrome, windows, even water tanks, turned matte, absorbing the glow. Photographers attempting to capture the event found their cameras overexposed even with the lens caps on. Film developed later showed silhouettes where nothing had been standing, faint outlines of people. Fence posts and cars burned into the emulsion like x-rays of a vanished second. The University of Texas sent a research team to study residual radiation. None was found, but they did record something else. A measurable drop in air temperature, 20 degrees in less than 60 seconds. The flash had produced light without heat. A military radar station in Fort Davis logged a similar anomaly. Saturation spike, non-reflective. Signal returned negative. Target area invisible to beam. In other words, for one minute, the desert stopped reflecting radar, as if it wasn't there. Local rancher Douglas Fenner described what it looked like firsthand. The sky turned silver. My shadow vanished. The cows froze, not moving, just staring. It felt like the world blinked. When the flash ended, everything returned to normal, except the glass. Windows in Marfa's old courthouse were found warped. Edges softened like melted plastic, yet the temperature never exceeded 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The glass had melted cold. NASA investigated the event quietly under Project Radiant, comparing it to high-altitude plasma discharges. Their conclusion was a single line, unknown atmospheric photonic inversion. No further study was published. Since then, the phenomenon has repeated, smaller, briefer, roughly every 12 years, always during extreme heat, always over the same patch of land. Locals have come to expect it. They call it white noon. On those days, animals go silent. Watches lose sync, and sometimes, just before the light hits, the horizon bends, as if the desert is folding inward, preparing to vanish again. Maybe it's heat, maybe it's something older than the sun pushing through for a glimpse, but if light can stop casting shadows, then maybe we've never really understood what light is. The Vanishing Highway Curve the eastern stretch of Interstate 70 cuts through miles of flat Kansas farmland, a perfect horizon in every direction. But for one night in November of 1994, part of that highway simply wasn't there. At 1.27 a.m., truck driver Henry Colburn radioed Kansas Highway Patrol from mile marker 222, reporting that the road ahead folded up like a curtain. Dispatch assumed he was fatigued. Then they lost his signal. When state troopers arrived 20 minutes later, the truck was gone. Tire marks led halfway through a gentle curve and stopped. No skid, no brake, just a clean end of tread. The asphalt was undamaged, the barrier intact. 
as if the vehicle had evaporated mid-turn. Fourteen hours later, Colburn reappeared, thirty miles west standing beside his idling truck in a wheat field. The engine was running. The clock on his dashboard read 1.41 a.m., the same time he'd vanished. He was disoriented but uninjured. His logbook showed no missing pages. His wristwatch had stopped for exactly 14 hours, restarting the moment he stepped out of the cab. When investigators checked his GPS records, the device showed continuous operation. No loss of power, no tampering. But the root data contained a blank segment. Coordinates missing from 1.27 a.m. to 3.03 p.m., replaced by a single error code. Path undefined. Radar towers monitoring the region that night reported an unexplained dead zone in the same area. Signal blackout, 1.3 miles radius, 1.26 to 1.27 a.m. Duration, 58 seconds. Yet for Colburn, those 58 seconds were 14 hours long. Highway engineers inspected the curve and found nothing unusual until they noticed the reflectors. Every tenth post along the guardrail faced the wrong direction, angled inward toward the road instead of outward, as if the curve had been flipped, reversed from the inside. Local residents later recalled seeing a faint blue shimmer over that stretch of highway that night, like heat rising from asphalt that wasn't hot. The official report cited optical fatigue and microsleep. Unofficially, the patrol added a note. Unexplained delay consistent across devices. Recommend closure. That section of I-70 has since been repaved, but truckers still avoid it. They say CB radios distort near marker 2122, voices looping mid-sentence for a few seconds before returning. One driver claims he heard his own voice answering back. Every GPS ping in that corridor shows the same error code, path undefined. The system doesn't know where the road is, or maybe it knows something it can't admit. Because if a highway can vanish for one minute of real time and 14 hours of memory, then space isn't fixed, it's editable. And somewhere between two mile markers in Kansas, someone, or something, press delete. The radio that broadcasts the future. At the edge of the Arctic Circle, sound travels differently. Crisp, weightless, amplified by cold air. But in February of 1955, one signal reached Barrow, Alaska, before it should have existed. The operator on duty at the US weather station, a veteran named Earl Mahoney, was monitoring routine AM frequencies for pilot chatter when his receiver locked onto a faint emergency call. It was a man's voice, panicked, reporting an engine failure over sea ice. The coordinates came through clearly. 71 to 17 N, 156 to 45 5 W. Mahoney wrote them down immediately. He tried to respond, but the signal was gone. He called the Air Force outpost in Fairbanks, who confirmed no aircraft were missing. The log entry for that night reads, Unidentified distress call, timestamp 2106, voicemail, repeated phrase, we're losing altitude. No radar contacts in range. Three days later, a C-47 supply aircraft en route to Point Lay vanished off radar. The coordinates of its last transmission matched Mahoney's note exactly. Rescue teams recovered the wreckage two weeks later, directly on that spot. The onboard recorder survived the crash. Its last transmission, sent at 21.06, matched the call Mahoney had logged three days earlier, word for word, intonation identical, static and all. It wasn't an echo. It was the same message, broadcast twice, once from the future, once from the moment of death. Military analysts called it temporal signal interference, suggesting the polar ionosphere might have refracted radio waves and delayed them in a continuous loop. But that explanation failed. The time gap between transmissions was 72 hours, far beyond any known atmospheric reflection. The tape of Mahoney's original recording was stored in Anchorage until 1961, when it disappeared from the archive. The Air Force sealed the duplicate, marking it Anomalous Transmission Case 117. The label still exists. The audio doesn't. Locals in Barrow remember Mahoney differently. They say he stopped using radios after that, refused to even own one. He told a neighbor once, after too much whiskey. It wasn't an echo. I think it was a warning from someone who didn't know he was already dead. To this day, amateur radio operators in northern Alaska report a faint repeating transmission that fades in and out on frequency 462 kilohertz. It always begins the same way, static, a breath, and a man's voice. We're losing altitude. Sometimes it plays when there's no storm, no aircraft, no interference. Sometimes it answers when no one's calling. Because maybe sound doesn't just travel through space, maybe under the right conditions, it travels through time. 
the zero degree chamber. Sandia National Laboratories sits in the high desert of New Mexico, a maze of underground facilities where temperature, radiation and pressure are measured to the atom. But in 2019, one of their test chambers did something no chamber should ever do. At 0219 AM on March 9th, technicians were conducting a cryogenic endurance test, cooling a tungsten sample using liquid helium to simulate extreme vacuum conditions. The room's sensors were designed to record down to one Kelvin above absolute zero. Instead, they registered zero, zero Kelvin, minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit, the point where all atomic motion stops, where physics itself ends. For 0.4 seconds, the instruments froze, literally and figuratively. Every digital display went black, every fan halted mid-rotation, and the tungsten sample vanished from thermal imaging. The cameras kept rolling, but the object produced no infrared signature. Then, the alarms went off. Temperature spiked back to normal, 293 Kelvin. But the helium tanks remained full untouched. No coolant had been expended. The sample was still there, perfectly intact, but its molecular lattice had changed. Atoms appeared closer than physics allows, compressed beyond their electron boundaries. The team evacuated the lab. A follow-up analysis noted trace electromagnetic residue on the chamber's walls, resembling radiation decay patterns, except the isotopes decayed in reverse, gaining energy instead of losing it. Sandia issued a brief public statement calling it a calibration error, but internal memos, later leaked, described the event as a spontaneous phase inversion, local vacuum collapse. In simpler terms, for less than half a second the air inside the chamber ceased to exist. Security footage from the hallway showed something even stranger. At the exact moment of the drop, a faint ripple appeared in the frame, like heat distortion moving against the flow of air. Two guards reported a deep hum, similar to a distant jet, followed by the smell of ozone. After the test, the tungsten sample exhibited properties never documented before. Density increased by 3%, reflectivity doubled, and under a microscope, the surface showed an engraved pattern. Six concentric circles burned into the metal. No tool could have made them. Physicists quietly nicknamed it the Zero Mark. Sandia sealed the chamber, scrubbing all data except a timestamp, 21904. Every attempt to reproduce the experiment since has failed. Some researchers believe the chamber touched a true vacuum, not empty space, but the opposite of space, a kind of anti-environment where energy folds inward. Others think it was a one-time quantum fault, reality correcting itself after being asked a question it couldn't answer. Either way, something inside that lab reached the coldest possible state known to science and found there was still movement, because even when matter stops, something keeps breathing underneath it. Six moments. Six times the universe forgot its own rules, a field in Alabama where gravity lifted its hands and let go, a Montana lake that misplaced an hour of daylight, a Texas desert where light erased shadows and melted glass cold, a Kansas highway that folded out of existence for one minute and 14 hours, a radio in Alaska that caught a voice from the future, and a lab in New Mexico where matter stopped moving, but something kept breathing inside the silence. We build our world on constants, the speed of light, the pull of gravity, the rhythm of time, but every so often something cracks in the numbers, and for a few seconds the constants forget to stay constant. No magic, no myth, just the universe revealing that it's still under construction. Maybe these weren't malfunctions, maybe they were reminders that physics isn't a prison, it's a promise, and promises can be broken. Six anomalies, six glimpses into the gaps holding everything together. If you made it this far, thank you. Leave a like if one of these stories bent your sense of what's real. Tell us which law of nature you trust the least and which one you think will fail next. But remember, the world doesn't always break where we can see it. Sometimes it pauses and just long enough to see who's watching when it does.